This video is sponsored by Squarespace. On my last trip, I decided to sleep in my photo blind so that I could be there and be ready when the birds would hopefully arrive in the morning. It turned out to be a very good idea and I got some great experiences with the birds and some great photos. This time, I'm going to take you on a little tour in my beautiful backyard. And I'm going to share some of the projects that I've been really focused on the last few months. I'm going to talk a little about my photo blind and I want to share some of the wildlife I have just outside my door. About seven years ago, I moved to the countryside, to a small farm with a little piece of land. Just big enough to have a grass field, meadow, swamp and a forest. I love walking around with my camera and discover new species, but my main purpose here is just to let nature be wild and undisturbed. It is spring here in Denmark and I'm standing just outside my little farm, which is right there, partly painted on the front. Have a look. And um, when it's springtime, it's time for me to start up a lot of projects like putting up bird boxes and uh, hopefully the common kestrel uh, is coming. I moved in here seven years ago and the little box was already there and the first year I didn't see anything but then I thought okay maybe it's too old and stuff like that and then the, the year after the two kestrels came and they made it and got eggs and small kestrels and they have done that every year since that. Now I have seen they have arrived this year and they have been mating and I really really hope there are eggs in there so that I can uh, look at these small kestrels and photograph them later this summer. Down there on the little piece of land I have my photo blind and a new project that I've started up. I just want to give you a little quick tour down there and up in the forest and uh, yeah, let's go down in the little meadow, the swamp and the forest and see what's down there. The reason why I have a fence here is because my neighbors has cows. Here in Denmark, cows doesn't walk free all over the landscape. Everyone who are having cows have a fence to keep them in. The reason why I have a fence is because I would like these cows to be able to come over here only a few months during the year. Because in the natural world, animals will go freely and they will eat just the best and then they'll move on to another place. When you have cows year round, uh, inside a fence, they will have to eat everything and the result will be like a very, what to say, hard pressure on nature, just like the field over there where grass is like this height and nothing else is there. I don't want that. I would like it more like a natural landscape here. And because we do not have these huge herds of red deer in this area, um, I'll have to make that with cows. And you can see on one side you have the tall reeds and the other side you have a little more variation. And what I'm trying to do here is to simulate nature back in the days before all the farming, all the people where huge herds of uh, red deer would do the same as I'm trying to get these cows to do today. So uh, yeah, but let's go down further to the forest. This is what I have been looking really much forward to, to show my new project.
I've been working on this project for a few months now and it has really been challenging to get it to work. It is a web camera doing a 24-7 live stream and it's all running on solar power and batteries. And <laughs> it's, yeah, I started this winter and now finally it seems like it's stable and it's able to send live without breaking down when I have two or three days of rain. The whole purpose of this is to learn more about the wildlife on this land. I've been working with game cameras for five years now and where they are really really good at capturing moments and short bits of videos, this one has the benefit that it is live 24 hours a day. During the daytime it's color and during night times it's black and white. But the fact is that it's just never stopping. That gives me the perfect opportunity to not only see what kind of species that comes here and what they do in a moment, but basically observe on the behavior of, let's say, the badger. Try to see how the martins react when there's another martin coming in uh, to the area. All these things uh, is just, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I think it's phenomenal to get that knowledge. And also, I want to use this for testing. I want to put my contraption up down here, my camera trigger, and see how does it affect the animals when the flash goes off? Does it bother them? Uh, or what about pushing a sweaty t-shirt down here? And how does the badger and the fox react on the, the scent when I'm here? The only thing I'm missing now is to make a little house so that the microphone and the camera can get away from the wind and the rain and just be a little more stable so that the wind will not knock them over and the, the fog in the early morning and the rain uh, will not get on the lens. This will all go live uh, on my YouTube channel um, very soon, but I'll talk a little more about that in the behind the scenes. <laughs> Let's go. Are they Are they killed it? Snack the camera. Huh? Ready? I think it's really boring to talk to the camera. this time of the year uh, I never let the dog just run because this is now where the foxes and badger and the, the badgers have their babies yeah sit sit I do not want to go further up today because I think there is a chance that the fox and the badgers either one or the other might have a den up here or they have a den but I think they might have small ones so uh, uh, I'm going up there to look one of these days, but without the vlogging camera and without the dog. Just want to be quiet and see if we can maybe set up a, a game camera or something without disturbing these. But let's walk up just a little bit and I'll show you a few things and explain you why I love this forest. Come here. I wish my fitness was as good as uh, Björn's. My plan here is to do nothing, like absolutely nothing. Maybe just keep a few tracks uh, available for me to walk, but other than that, I just want to let nature do its job here and see what happens. That means when a tree falls, I leave it there to rotten, to be a new home for insects and birds and mushrooms and stuff like that. Uh, when there's a storm and a lot of trees are tipping over, just leave them. So what I want to see here in the perfect world is a paradise for insects, mushrooms, birds and mammals. And my uh, live camera will definitely reveal how much wildlife there is here and the priority of, of wildlife. So uh, hopefully, hopefully this will be like a the secret place for the animals where there are no hunts, 
uh, no mountain bikes, no disturbance, no dogs running around uh, in, in the mating season. I just want this to be like a, a space where animals and wildlife and all these small creatures can just be safe. One of the first thing I did when I moved here was to set up a photo blind. I got it from a friend uh, who didn't need it anymore and um, I have to do some modification on that blind but as it is now it has just been such a great help, a great help to actually uh, see and photograph the birds in the area. Especially the craws, the buzzards, magpies, jays, they are really really shy and almost impossible to get close to unless uh, I can be in the blind and be invisible and that is the area here uh, I used to go maybe once every second week or uh, to to put out uh, nuts seeds maybe a roadkill to attract the birds and then through the entire summer I don't put any food at all I try to make this as natural as possible I try not to make it like a feeding spot if I would make this a feeding spot with meat all the time and a plenty of food, there will be so much animal, so much wildlife in this location. But it's not my intention. My intention is simply to attract a little uh, wildlife in a short period and then let it become normal. Again, not to disturb, uh, what you say, the balance of nature in this area. So uh, let's go and see if that fox den is active. I haven't actually been there for two weeks because I do not want to disturb if there are anything there but we can go and have a look at a distance um, because I'm really excited about that and I want to put up a game camera one of the following days but then uh, yeah. Okay we cannot go close to the den because I see uh, fresh footprints. I'll show you from here and hopefully you can see that they are, what to say, paw prints. I don't know if it's a fox, but to look from the way, the shape of the, um, the den, it is a fox. A badger would have had this, like, this tunnel coming out because it's dragging out grass and moss and stuff like that. The fox doesn't use that in the bed, so uh, yeah, that's completely different. It is truly amazing. No, wait, let me let me go a little away. There's no reason to actually talk here. It is amazing to have wildlife so close to where I live. That fox den has been like digged out during this winter. And the amazing thing is that you can attract birds to your garden by feeding. You can, uh, it's windy, but you cannot attract the, f you, you can attract the fox uh, by feeding but there's no way you can attract uh, the fox and force it to make a den in your backyard so this is just lucky now i want to get back into my little uh, wooden uh, room and talk a little about the live stream when it's going live and what you can expect and i also want to talk about giving you give some tips about how you can attract wildlife to your own garden and how you can actually uh, do a few things in your garden that just has a huge uh, impact on the amount of wildlife and biodiversity you have so uh, let's get back home and get some fire in the in the oven That was a little tour in my backyard and in this behind the scenes I want to talk about the live stream, when it will go live, what you can expect in there and what is the purpose of all this, not only from my perspective but also for like the rest of the viewers. I also want to give you a few tips on how you can attract some wildlife to your garden or balcony or just to the forest where you live in a natural way. So yeah, let's get started. Before we move on, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. 
Squarespace lets you build professional looking websites without any knowledge about coding and web design. You simply choose one of the many great looking templates and by dragging and dropping photos and changing the text and colors you can make it your own. You can create beautiful galleries to showcase your work and it's very easy to update the gallery with your latest photos. It also has built-in e-commerce so you can start selling your prints, calendars and digital products. So if you need a new website, head over to squarespace.com to start your 14 days free trial. And you can use the off code Morten Hilmer to get 10% off your first purchase. I've put a link in the description. That was a, a lot of walking around, talking about different things. But that is probably my life in a nutshell. Uh, I have so many projects going on at this time of the year. And... Uh, the last thing, or like the thing that fills most in my mind, is uh, that live camera, the live stream. Hopefully, it will go live within one or two weeks. Trust me, I wanted to just publish this a month ago, but I'm so glad I didn't do it. Because while I have enjoyed watching the badger, the, the bird, the, the fox, the martin, I've had so many uh, issues with that system. Because it's all running on solar uh, power and we are near the forest, there's only a few hours with sun every day. It'll all be much easier when we get to like May or April because the sun is just higher in the sky and we have more sunny hours here in Denmark. So I need to make some last adjustments and when that is fixed within a week or so, I will publish the live video. When it's published, I'll enable a chat so that people can write uh, time and observations. And that means that when everyone comes in, you don't have to go through the past 12 hours. You can basically look in the chat and see, okay, there's a Martin at that point. There's a Fox and a Badger at that point. And that'll be really, really nice because then I want to keep track on the animals, not every observation, but in the, co but in the comment field, like in the video description, I want to write uh, what animals has been observed at what time, but only once. So like one time I'll write the fox, the martin, the the badger, the um, blackbird, the jay, the magpie. So I want to see how many different species we can observe together during the time that the live uh, uh, stream is running. Yeah, sorry for reading up the entire book, <laughs> but uh, I, it, it's, uh, my head is full of this right now. I'm really looking forward to it. Luckily, I'll get a little break now because um, I'll go to the Badger place, but more about that later in the video. Um, next thing is, I would like to give a few advices on how to actually attract wildlife, because um, if you have a place like me, like in the countryside with a lot of nature, it's quite easy because there are animals already. But uh, I just had a, a talk with Simon, my friend. Uh, he's living in the middle of the city on the fourth floor in, a, in a, an apartment. And there were no birds at all except from seagulls. So he did a little experiment and we talked a lot about that. By he, put up, he, he did put up bird feeders and water out there and places for the birds to, to take a bath. And within, I think it was two or three weeks, he had a lot of birds on his balcony. So the reason why I'm telling that is like, regardless where you live, you can attract wildlife. It's just to think what species would I like to, to see and what is realistic in the area where I live. So it's probably not realistic to get a bad job on fourth floor, but it's quite realistic to get like the great tit or the blackbird or something like that. So when you, when you see what kind of species you have around, try to think what do they need? Like, to take me as an example, I would really like the fox here. So I thought, okay, to get the fox, what what things do I need to have? Uh, water, peas, and food for the fox. What does the fox eat? It eats mice. So I, can, I can't just go out and call all the mice. So I, I need to say, what does the mice eat? What kind of landscape does the mice like? It likes maybe uh, some short grass, maybe the forest, maybe some seeds. Um, okay, then I left some of the some of the bushes that gave the seeds that the mice would like so a lot of the hazel, and because of I have a lot of hazel, uh, there's a lot of food for the mice, and there's a lot of places where they can live, and because there's a lot of mice, there are foxes, and you know things like that. 
the badgers like maybe berries and snails and stuff like that. Um, and because my forest is so wild, uh, there are like a buffet for the badger. So things are always connected like that. It's a, the food chains uh, and you just have to think about that. So again, just to make it a, a short, think about the animals, what, what needs do they have? If these needs are there, they just have to figure out that uh, you have a little food for them and then they will come. Again, as I talked about in the last video, there are a lot of ethics about feeding animals, wild animals, uh, and it's all a balance. I do not believe it's either bad or good. There are balances that and you just have to, to keep in mind not to make the animal dependent on the food source you provide them. And then suddenly when you lose interest, just stop because that is not, that is not so good for the animals. Mm. Oi. That was nice coffee. Now, what's happening now? I am going to uh, the little island, the protected island, to photograph badgers once again. This time, I'm going to stay there for one week. Uh, I'm bringing the cam trap and photo trap. I have my blind out there. You probably saw that if you have seen my video where I tried to photograph in the snow. Uh, this time, I'm bringing my hammock. I'm trying to sleep in the forest to make less uh, disturbance, uh, just as an experiment one of the days. And then I'm just going to have a good time and hopefully I'll get something this time so I have something to share with you. So uh, yeah, time to pack my photo gear to get off for that island. So yeah, see you out there. Come here. 